Hello and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I build this car bed here with my dog. Hope you enjoy. So first of all here, I've cut it so it sits up into the, the small of the back here. It curves in and it's going to be instrumental later on in actually holding this and helping to hold it in place. Now the width here was the width across to the door, across to this side here where the gear shift is. Not to get in the way with the foil drive gear shift over here. And just staying off the actual uh, leather here of the front console. And it's just tapping across into the door over here. And we'll do stuff to sort that out later on. And you can see the width here is a little bit short just here. And that's by design and we'll get into that later on when we fit the other platform out here. And then I just want to bring you around this side so you can have a look down over here at one other thing that I had to do to get this to fit. Uh, if you look down just here, I had to notch the board out to put it around the normal seatbelt receiver here because this is a dog tether strap and I just needed just enough room for that to fit in there so I've taken a little notch out of here with all the clearances and that's enough to get the strap to come through so the dog can be tethered. So now that we've covered the basic design, let's go back into the shed and I'll show you what timber we're using and then we'll get to marking it out and making our design off the template I already have. I'm actually just going to be using one of these pre-laminated pine boards. Um, if you can get yourself some plywood, you could use that for it. Uh, all the plywood that I could find locally was not of very good quality, so I settled on this piece of pine. Uh, which is going to be more than strong enough. Plywood is probably more ideal for it, but get what you can get. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's only for a small dog in my case. If you're doing it for a larger dog, well, you might have to bolster your design a little bit. But that that's up to you. Now, the main reason I wanted to show you how I got my design was so that you guys can customise it for your vehicle and to get the size of your top plate. And... You've really just got to customise it for the vehicle that you're working for and exactly where you're putting that platform. The same design could work in the back seats of your car as well, but you're just going to have to modify it yourself to get that to fit. I'm just going to use a screw design on the top here, just rebated screws to hold it in. I'm not really going to glue it because I want there to be a little bit of movement in it. Uh, not a lot, but as you're going over corrugations and things, you might want a little bit of movement in it. Now, screws are not going to give you a lot of movement, but they'll give you a tiny bit of movement. I want a little more strength than nails, otherwise I would have used nails because that would get me a little more movement. But I want more strength of that, so I want it to be held together solid enough, but still have a little bit of flex. Which you will get in the wooden stuff if you're not going to glued. So, that's part of the design here. Let's just tuck the board up on this corner here. I have some sort of a cutout like this, which I'm going to try and do a little more... Uh, carefully than this and maybe get a nice round in here use the another one of our saws here the coping saw to do that and then up over here I'll probably use the coping saw as well so what I'm going to do is just mark these angles which I know I need now lucky for me that this strip here is probably what I'm going to use for the foot so there's probably 50-60 mil here and that's what we're going to use for this part of the foot here on the new leg. So what I'm going to do, because I haven't come right to the edge, is just put a square on here and give me that final line through so I can follow it with my saw. Same on this edge. I want that straight line and I'm just going to give myself a little reference line on that side and on this side just so I know where I'm going with my saw. As usual, for chopping a panel such as this, glued up panel, plywood, cross-cut saw because we're cutting across the grain. Before I start, a little bit of just white candle or paraffin wax. So I'm just rubbing some wax on the panel. That'll help it slide through, stop it getting stuck. So as you've seen me do this a number of times before, we're going to come right up on that corner. Now, obviously, I can't really see that line down there, so I'm only really going off what's above me. Or what's on the top here. I will reach over just to make sure I'm getting that line where I want it. Which I am. Now, just need to make sure that that's holding because it's moving slightly. 
slightly. You want your wood held nice and tight when you're doing this. And so now we're established here. Our only reference is, of course, across the top here. And then we just run across. to this situation, I grab here, just so I'm supporting it because I don't want it to drop or snap, so I'm supporting it on opposite side with my hand here, and I don't know if you can see here, I've actually got my knee or hip elevated up into it just to hold it here on my side. that last little bit and just slowly move it. So now we've got that cross cut done. We want to cut this little strip off, that rip strip that you saw before. So what I'm going to do is set it up the same, but grab my rip saw at about 12, 13 teeth per inch, and we'll rip that off on the bench in the similar technique you just saw us using the cross cut saw. Once again, a little bit of paraffin candle wax. I know I haven't fully squared this off, but I just want to get a straight line reference with the top, just so I know where I'm going with my sawing. doesn't matter that I haven't planed this yet, it's just a little reference. In this case, we can stay right on top of this line. And we'll be on the corner like so. Once again, when I get down here, I just start holding it a little bit closer to the saw, somewhere in the middle. Because it's a thin light piece, it's not really going to drop, so I'm just holding it to stop it doing that. And once again, once you get to the edge, try and bring it more vertical like this. And just nibble it slowly. And then when you hit the edge, I just like to let it off a little bit. So now we've done this, we want to jump back down here into the vise, and we're just going to give them a quick hand plane and clean them up. I've run a clamp under my bench just to clamp this far edge of this wide board just so it'll be held nice and sturdy while we plan through. This one's my pre-lateral adjuster, that's why you saw me using the hammer. So you can hear the longer length of the sole and we're skipping the front and back edges and slowly bringing this into flat. Now one thing I want to do is just come back in on this side and just take a slight up angle so when the blade comes through it doesn't punch that edge out. So what I'm now going to do is just run a little chamfer on this side here. The reason I'm not using the clamp to hold it when I'm doing the long grain is I just bring my uh, uh, toolbox that's down under my bench here out and I just rest it on that and because we're going with the long grain there's less force required so I don't fi find the need to actually clamp it take a single pass down there Second pass down the edge, and then a lighter pass in the middle, and we should be completely square. So, since I'm already working on this top piece, and before we go ahead and do the leg, work out exactly the width I want for that, I'm going to go ahead and do the rebate on here because that'll also allow me to know how much extra height I need to put onto that foot that was on my mock up. I'm going to grab the Stanley 78 rebate plane. I'm going to go ahead and use that moving philister plane for this with that nicely sharpened cross grain nicker 
which I did in last week's video. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave that link down below. And so what we're going to be doing is setting that to the exact thickness of this board, which happens to be 18 millimeters. I'm thinking I might make it 19 millimeters just so I'll make sure that it sits inside the edge just because I don't want it sitting proud. I think I'm only going to go in about five millimeters on the rebate because I don't want it to be too deep. I don't want to lose too much strength in the timber by doing that. So I have set this up to the 19 millimeters and the six millimeters or five or six millimeters deep. Now what I've done here, which you haven't normally seen is that I'm resting this up against my hold fast, the actual main shaft of it just here just a little bit off camera and that's so this board doesn't actually move uh, so when I'm putting weight against it it'll actually stay in place so to allow for that I just open my vise here because I'm going to be running into this gap so as long as I don't hit anything that's fine so to get started we reference it against the fence pull it back and now we want to start up this front edge here Still moving a little bit, so I just want to make sure these hold fasts are held down really tight. Now I'm picking up a little bit of friction around here just because it's getting a little warm, so just like I showed you in the other video, a little bit of candle wax here will help to alleviate that as well. Now before we move on to take that foot, I want to do these couple of details. I want to take this corner piece here out that I showed you, and also the little notch for the seatbelt holder for the strap. I'll choke this up in the vise here and we'll probably use a coping saw to take that curve out. There are a diff few different ways that you can cover cutting curves using chisels and whatnot and I think we'll cover that in a separate video but for today we'll just use the coping saw which is the obvious or if you've got a turning saw you can use that too. So this is the coping saw I was telling you about. I haven't really talked a whole lot about the coping saw. We generally use them to remove waste when doing dovetails and you've probably seen me do that in a few videos. So you can either chisel waste or use a coping saw. Now in this case, because that's a small round here, we can actually use the coping saw to do that. So if I reference here, just so I can see where square is to it, and a little reference here. But obviously I'm following this line on this side, which normally I'd have on my side, but so you guys can see it, I'm going to keep it on that side. I have this set to cut on the push stroke. And... Let's get started. Now when using a coping saw, you always want to be pushing it in the direction of cut when you turn it, otherwise you can snap the blade. So you just got to be very careful of that. Now if you don't follow the line 100%, that doesn't matter. We can clean this up with some rasps and stuff afterwards. Now you can see I'm still following it and this is not touching down here yet. If it does, you can actually rotate these little pieces here. And we'll cover that when I go in more depth onto the, the coping saw later on. But just know you can move the frame so it keeps out of the way. So we can see we got pretty close to that line. Now I just want to refine this because this is all rough and disgusting. You can see how I've got this square bit here where I started can't readily use the spoke shave to get rid of that, so I'm just going to... Use the rasp here just to round that over. Actual fact, I'm just going to do this rough work with this rasp. Because it's not much of a curve, you can kind of use the flat, but the curve is going to help you get it a little more refined. And now I'm going to come back in with that spoke shave. And the grain's going in that direction, so I'm starting down here and using a very fine cut. The 
getting these little scratch lines with my spoke shave, so I think I've got a little dig out of the blade. So I'll have to uh, cover sharpening one of these again. I'm grabbing anything that's got this, a similar sort of profile, which happens to be my mallet handle here in this case. Holding a little bit of 240 grit sandpaper there. And that's all smoothed out. So now we've got that detail done. You guessed it. I'm going to want to work on the detail on this corner now. So we can see this is a little bit straighter. It doesn't really need to be. So I'm probably going to use the coping saw and just bring it in and actually curve that out a little bit more than we've got here. Just so it's a little more rounded in this profile down here. And it'll give a little more space. It doesn't really matter if I cut that a little bit larger than what I had it on my plan, because it was a little bit on the tight side to start with. Just like before, couple of reference lines. it off with the sandpaper. You can actually glue this onto a piece of Dowless sandpaper to get this part done if you really want to. So now I've got the top board done. We need to make our leg ready to fit it. So we're going to go 305 this way here. Do another reference mark over here, and then 350 this way. And then I'm going to grab my ruler, go from mark to mark, run a line. I need a slightly longer ruler this way technically. And I'll just go from mark to mark here and then shove it up, shuffle it across. <laughs> chamfer these long grain edges. Now we can actually use the shooting board like this if we're careful. We've got some nice chamfers on those edges and we're good to go with this. So the last step before we assemble this is we just need to cut this foot to length and clean that up, give it a few chamfers and we'll screw that on the bottom of the foot before we attach it. What I'm going to do is just square an edge off this first using the shooting board. So we want to get our measurements. So what we want to do is use our fingers and just match square on the edge like this. Come along and then we'll get our pencil, make a little notch on this corner, run it off this factory square edge to it, square a line along, square a line along here. Now we want to cut this off and then use the shooting board once again. Start on that far corner and in this case because the line's on the camera side, um, 
just trying to run down there and then I can reference across the top. Side we just saw and we want to put that factory edge back up against here. Before we go ahead and attach this, on that bottom edge we want to have a nice chamfer or round over. For this I'm going to come in with the new Stanley Bailey. Now this edge here is going to be the bottom so I'm going to attach this top edge so on this top edge away from me the idea is I'm just going to put a fine chamfer here. And now we're ready to attach this onto our leg which is going to sit in the middle here. So when it comes to this I like to use double sided tape. You could probably use a little bit of super glue if you wanted to. I find that this helps to hold it but it's not a permanent stick so it actually works quite well. So I like to go the full length of something like this and then just chop that off. Now I only need half of it for this so the other half I'll keep for the other side when we attach it onto the main board. So this is this very thin double sided tape. This one is uh, from Bear Industries. Uh, any very super thin uh, double sided tape will work for this. And then we just nick the corner. And now we want to try and get this in the middle. Now it doesn't have to be 100% in the middle. You could do some marks if you want it 100% in the middle. But if it's out a little bit, it doesn't matter too much. So I'll roughly align it, and then I'll move it across in the vise, so I've got the bars of my vise underneath it. Give it a press, and now, if you look, that's stuck. I'm going to go along and pre-drill all the holes, so I'm going to come in about an inch from the edge. First hole, both sides an inch from the edge. And then from there, I'm going to put another three. That's five in total along here. And I'm going to come in with my little countersink bit. And then I'm just going to grab a little Phillips head bit like this one here and drive these screws in. So, I'm just going to run into a quick little montage here that'll be attaching the leg to this. When you see me next, I'll be out at the vehicle again and showing you how we fit this into my car. Now for the moment of truth here, I'm going to show you how I put this together. So I use this dog bed so you can take it out and clean it. And that's why I don't have any foam actually attached to the, the structure. And I use a towel. So I sit the towel just on the base of the seat here. And that sort of covers that little lull in the bottom here where it drops too low. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the platform. The platform comes in and because we're predetermined how it was all going to go. It fits in here very well, exactly how we wanted it to. Now, just need to move 
this towel and adjust it a little bit just so it sits a little bit further forward than I first wanted it to so you can see how this pushes up against the back and it doesn't move now and the seat belt area here that actually clears it quite nicely now to attach this and stop this moving what I do is I actually fold that under the back and then I push it up against the seat and then I tuck the front of it through that gap and that's why I said I wanted that gap there just down over here and what that does is hold the bed in place as well now I'll bring you around here and I'll show you how I stop this the rest of this moving so obviously there's no forward to back movement of any note here that's in there nice and tight but as I showed you before, I use one of these Oki straps where you can use a flat strap. And I'm just going to put that on there and show you how that works too. Part of it is that this can come in and out real easy. And you can see that we, we're left with quite a big gap here. So you can store things down under here, stuff for your dog or whatever. So what I do is I undo this. What I've done here is just fed that around the front of the foot. And then I stretch these together and hold them there. And that just ensures with a little bit of downward angle weight but it's pushing it up into the back of the seat here so it can't move and it's also helping to stop it bouncing and slide forward you can put a flat strap that does it up but I find this works well with a little bit of give it's actually a good thing and it holds it and stays and it stays in place so I guess the moment of truth is to go and get the dog so I'm going to go bring the dog out I won't put a harness on and clip her in then I'll have to actually take her out right now, which I'm not ready to do. So I'm going to bring her out here, get her to sit on here, just so you can see that she actually likes this type of platform. So there you have it, folks. The dog likes it, as you can see here. So if you like this video and you'd like to continue to support me, please consider liking and subscribing down below. And you'd like to see some more videos related to the moving Philister plane, I'll leave the video up here where I introduce the plane, and also the video down here where you can do rebates if you don't have a plane yet. Bye for now.